In this video, we're going to look at a new field that comes through on a customer voice survey response, and that's the details of the survey response itself. Now, in previous uh, using Forms Pro or with customer voice, what you would have to do in order to go ahead and get the details of a survey response is you'd either be looking at it within Forms Pro or customer voice itself, or you'd be able to see the details on the survey response if you had access to a model driven power app, you also see the questions and the responses here. But what each response is tied to is a question response and that question response is tied to a question. So it kind of goes several different record types back. And also if we are to look at um, a power a flow in Power Automate, uh, let's go with this one. So this is a very basic flow that is basically saying when a record is created, so if we look at a um, step here where we're saying when a new customer voice survey response record is created, we then want to get the response details for that survey. And what we have to do is we have to set the and define which form it is. So in other words, which survey it is that we're wanting to get and then use the link from this response ID up here. So we'd have to have a flow for every different one of our surveys if we want to do a sort of a repeatable process. Now, what if I want to have a notification that is sent out when a survey has been responded to and I want to get an email? If I want to say, well, what was the question and what, what was the response? I would have to go through and do this step and I'd have to do it for one flow for each of those surveys. So it's not really ideal. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and I can set up one flow that says anytime there's a survey that's responded to, let's go and get the details from that survey response and use that new details of the survey field that holds all of the question information and the responses and use that to go ahead and send an, an email notification to somebody. So if I go back over into my model driven power app and I go back up to this field, I'm just going to go ahead and select everything that's in here and let's go ahead and open up notepad and we'll just paste that in. Now here we can see that what it's given us is some JSON and it is giving us a different question ID with each response. So if I just go ahead and format this slightly and then we can see, there we go. So we've got five questions on a survey and we've got the response of Jane, then Doe, then an email address, then a number five and then a number nine. So I've got those responses and I've got an ID, a question ID for each of these. Now, if I go into, if we scroll down and we're looking at the same thing, if I go into first name, and I'm actually looking at the question that's tied to this specific survey, there's that question ID. So that is what I'm getting. If I look here, we've got first name, we've got Jane, and we can see there that ID is the same as that one. So it's giving us that information and then it's giving us the related response. All right, so if I go back into my flow, what I'm going to do is I've got a step that says when a new survey response is received or basically using that created um, trigger condition for the customer voice survey responses entity. Then what I'm going to do, and this part is just to kind of make it a little bit nicer when I do the email notification and so we can see what survey the response came from. So I'm going to use a get a retro record step from the common data service connector and I'm going to do the entity of surveys and I'm going to use the survey ID value that is coming from this trigger. So I'm going to get the survey that this response is related to. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to use the initialize variable step and I'm basically going to use the type of array. And what I'm doing is I'm basically creating an array that I'm going to be able to then populate later on with each of those survey responses to each of the questions. The next step is going to be pass JSON. And in terms of the schema, the schema um, I'll have posted in a related blog post for this, but this is basically going through and saying, right, well, we want to get the items and the properties are going to be the question ID and the response. So if you want to have a look at the link in this video, that should take you to the corresponding blog post and you can just copy that schema um, and paste it into that step. 
then what we need to do is for each of those values or those pairs that we're going to get back. So for this, we've got five questions and five responses. So for each of those, there's going to be five of them in this specific survey example. What we need to do is we need to, first of all, list the related question. So we're getting the question ID and we're getting the response. I want to know, well, what was the question text? What was actually asked? So Jane, that was first name. Doe, that was last name. So I want to get that. So what I'm going to do is use a list record step from the Common Data Service Connector. And my filter query is going to be based on filtering on the source question identifier as being that question ID. So that is my question ID here. And I'm getting that from the step where I pass the JSON. So I'm saying the source question identify equals whatever the question ID is. And that will then make it an apply to each and go through each of the question IDs that it pulls back from that pass JSON step. And what I found in testing and setting this up is that if you have a survey and you copy a survey, then it will use the same question ID on those questions. So I had a project with three different surveys, but I had copied from the first survey and made two additional copies. So what that meant was when I pulled in and just used the question identifier, I actually came back with three records. So what I needed to do was also add in a clause that says search on the source survey identifier equal equal to the source survey identifier from my trigger step. So that's why I've got two pieces of um, query filtering in there because the question ID could actually be on multiple questions. Then what we're doing is underneath that, we are then doing an append to the array variable step. So we're appending to that array that we created here. And what I'm doing is I'm adding in the question and I'm doing the question text that I pulled from this specific step here where we listed the records. That's why we have another apply to each. And then I'm using the response that is related to the responses that I found um, within that past JSON step. Finally, just a little bit of cleanup. I'm then going to use a create HTML table step just to make it look a little bit nicer. And then what I'm going to do is I will link to this in the blog post as well, a great post by my friend Ryan McLean. And that is to basically do a bit of formatting in that HTML table to make it look a little bit prettier. So I'm putting in some formatting ahead of the table right here. Then finally, we're just doing a step that says, go ahead and send an email to whoever might need to get that notification. And I'm saying, well, what survey was it received from? And I'm using the friendly name field um, in from the get record step where I got the survey. I'm using that. And then I'm doing the outputs from this step above from my compose step. So once we've done all that, what will happen is we will go ahead and receive an email that will look something like this. So we've got the questions, first name, last name, email, and so on. And then we have our responses and it looks quite pretty with a nice little header color and so on. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when you are adding your questions to your survey, as you're adding them, then what's gonna happen is that ID is going to be put in in a specific order. Um, so when I'm creating my new survey, then those questions should come through in the order in which I've added them, which is great if I'm sitting and adding them one by one in a logical way. However, if I look at an example here, we can see these ones, the questions just don't really make much sense in terms of the order. So we've got first name at the bottom, last names in the middle, and then email. And that's because I had a survey and then I moved some questions around. So the original um, survey identifier, sorry, of the question ID that it was given was then I had a subsequent ID that was created later on and I'd shuffle things around so it just got a little bit out of sync so it doesn't look so good. So keep that in mind if you want to use something like this to create a, a notification of some kind, then just keep that uh, in the back of your mind that that is how that works at the moment. Hopefully that'll be something where we can actually have a sort on an array and then sort based on a number within that array. For now, that's how it works. One last thing that you might also want to do 
is let's say that I am looking for a specific question to have been answered. And if that specific question is answered, then I want to do something. What we can also do is just like in the previous one where we had that past JSON step, we can then put in a question and we can basically have that condition, sorry, not a question, a condition that is basically saying, if the question ID equals a specific ID, then let's do something. So let's post a notification in Teams or let's send an email to somebody or a text message or create a task or whatever that might be. So a couple of different things that you can then do with this. So as I said, this is relatively new. If we just go back to our um, response, that's where we can see the details of the survey response. Now, you are not likely to see this within your environment unless you go and actually edit the form. Um, and you go ahead and add that field on there. It's not on there by default, I don't believe. Um, but yeah, so that's a relatively new thing. Hopefully you'll find this useful. Uh, you might want to use the response details without having to always create a new flow for each of your surveys and without having to get the response details every single time. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.